Namaste and a very, very good morning to all of you. I welcome you to my channel, The Outlier. My name is Mithun. In today's video, I'll be talking about the PCA technique. Even before I demonstrate the PCA technique, may I request you to subscribe to my channel and like and share my videos. Let's begin by asking a fundamental question. What is PCA? PCA stands for Principal Component Analysis. I repeat, PCA stands for Principal Component Analysis analysis. It is a dimension reduction method. It helps us reduce the dimension of a large data set. PCA is a typical example of what we call as unsupervised learning technique. With this background, let me proceed to show you the raw data on which I will be performing the PCA. This is the spreadsheet which has the raw data. I have got two years of data starting from 2nd January 2019 all the way up to 5th December 2020. This data set I have picked from Kaggle and this data set talks about the power consumption of different regions in India. I repeat, it talks about the power consumption of different regions in India. You can see the column names like Punjab, Haryana, Rajasthan, Delhi, Uttar Pradesh, so on and so forth. Each of these numbers represent the power consumed by a particular state or union territory on a given day. So what we have is daily power consumption data for 33 regions of India. Let me scroll to the extreme right. You can see the different regions here. There are 33 different regions for which power consumption pattern is shown. As you might have already guessed, 33 is a lot of variables. Now, my goal here is to reduce the number of columns from 32 to 33, my apologies, from 33 columns, I want to reduce it to a smaller number of manageable factors. How do we reduce from 33 to a smaller number of factors? To reduce a large data set into a smaller data set, what we can do is use the PCA method. To demonstrate how PCA works, let me go to IBM SPSS. As you can see here, this is the data editor window of IBM SPSS. Let me import this data set. I'll click on the file menu. Go to recently used data. The very first file is power consumption data. As I already mentioned, this data set is present in Kaggle website. You can download this particular data set from Kaggle as well. We have loaded the data set in SPSS at this stage. Now, how do we perform the PCA? Let me just show you step by step how to perform PCA in IBM SPSS. First, let me click on the Analyze menu. I'll go straight to dimension reduction option. When I click on dimension reduction, the very first item that you see is factor. Let me click on the option factor. In the canvas on the left-hand side, you can see all the variables that are present in the data set. Let me choose all the different regions and push it into the canvas on the right hand side. So SPSS will be performing the PCA method for all these variables that you're seeing on the screen. To the top right hand side corner, you see five different options. What is called as the descriptives. Secondly, you have extraction. Thirdly, you have rotation. Let me begin by choosing descriptives. You have a lot of options here. I'd like to draw your attention to the last option, which is KMO 
and Bartlett's test of sphericity. KMO stands for Kaiser Mayer Olkin and Bartlett's test of sphericity. Both of these tests are used to check whether the factor analysis model is appropriate for your data set or not. I will explain this in detail in a few moments from now. Let me now click on continue. I'll now choose the option extraction. You can see here the default method of extraction that IBM SPSS uses is the principal components method. I'll click on the scree plot. A scree plot gives you a visual summary of the total variance explained by each of the components. What is the extraction criteria? We are going to extract those components which have an eigenvalue greater than one. Those components which have an eigenvalue less than one, we will overlook. With this, let me click on continue. You can see here below the extraction tab, you have another important option, which is called as rotation. Let me click on the rotation button. There are different types of rotation that you can perform using SPSS. I will be choosing the option Verimax rotation. Once I choose Verimax, I'll go ahead and click on continue. At this stage, we have all the variables. We have clicked on KMO and Butler's test. We have selected the PCA. We have chosen the Verimax type of rotation. There are two additional things that I need to perform. If you want to save the factor scores in the data set, what you need to do is click on the scores option. Here, you can choose the option save as variables and then click on continue. Finally, what I have is the options tab. Here, there are two things that you can do. That is sort by size and choose to suppress small coefficients. I'll choose the number 0 0.6, which means that those loadings which have a value less than 0 0.6 will not be displayed by SPSS. Let me click on continue. We are now ready to execute the factor analysis model on the power consumption data. Let me click on OK. The moment I click on OK, you can see here in the output window, SPSS shows a lot of different tables. Now, what are these tables? How do we make sense of these tables? To explain these tables in detail, let me take you back to the Excel spreadsheet. In Excel, I have copied and pasted each of these outputs, and it's a lot easier to explain the output from Excel. So let me open up Excel. This is the raw data which, you, uh, which you're very, very familiar with by now. The first thing that we need to do is look at the KMO and Bartlett's test. So two important prerequisites for you to do the factor analysis model is the KMO and the Bartlett's test. Let's look at the KMO measure of sampling adequacy. If factor analysis is suitable for your data set, KMO should show a value of greater than 0 0.7. I repeat, if the KMO measure of sampling adequacy is greater than 0 0.7, you can proceed to do the factor analysis model. If this number were to be less than 0 0.7, it is advisable that you don't do factor analysis as factor analysis would not be a right model for your data set. The second important criteria for you to check whether factor analysis is appropriate for your data set or not is what is called as the Bartlett's test of sparsity, which tests whether the correlation matrix is an identity matrix. What we want to see here is a p-value of less than 
0.05. When you look at the p-value, the, the p-value that I'm getting here is 0 0.000, which is clearly less than 0 0.05. And since the p-value is less than 0 0.05, I can reject my null hypothesis and conclude that the correlation matrix is not an identity matrix. So to summarize, the kayser mayer olkin measure must be greater than 0 0.7. And the p-value for Bartlett's test must be less than 0 0.05. If these two prerequisites are satisfied, you can go ahead and do the factor analysis model for your data set. What about step two? In step two, we explore a very, very important question in factor analysis. And that question is, how many factors do you need to form? Let's look at step two. Here, at a very high level, I have used a heat map to tell me how many factors would be appropriate for my data set. You can see here, this is the correlation matrix. You have all the different regions, and the numbers that you see here are nothing but the correlation values for the power consumption between the two states. Now you can see a lot of green color cells, which means that you can conceptually group states like Punjab, Haryana, Rajasthan, Delhi, Uttar Pradesh, and Uttarakhand. This could possibly go in one bucket. Similarly, you can see the second group of states here. Gujarat, MP, Maharashtra, Goa, Dadar and Nagar Haveli and Andhra Pradesh. You can see high values of correlation for some of these cells. The third group of states are the southern states, namely Telangana, Karnataka and Kerala. Further, you can look at some other groups as well. You can possibly put Pondicherry, Bihar, West Bengal in the fourth bucket. So when you look at the heat map at a very high level, it gives you a summary of those states which can be put and classified under one bucket. But more than a heat map, what I would suggest is you look at what is called as a scree plot because the scree plot tells us what is the optimal number of factors that you need to select. So let me go ahead to step three, which is the scree plot. You can see here in the X axis, what I have is the component number. I have 33 different components. And in the Y axis, what I have is the eigenvalue. The first component has an eigenvalue close to 12. The second component has an eigenvalue close to seven, so on and so forth. What is clear from the scree plot is the first six components have an eigenvalue larger than one. I repeat, the first six components have an eigenvalue larger than one. After six, you can see the blue line sort of uh, taper off which means that their eigenvalues are very, very tiny. Their eigenvalues less than one. Since we are using the criteria of eigenvalue greater than one, we can look at a six component solution. I repeat, we can look at a six component solution. So here using the scree plot, we can answer the first important question. How many factors are there in the data set? The answer is very clear. Scree plot says loud and clear that there are six components that you need to extract. Further, if you want to look at the numerical summary of this, these six components, I will make a move on to step four. In step four, I've highlighted the first six components because these first six components, when you look at the eigenvalue, please look at the heading here, initial eigenvalue, the first component has an eigenvalue of 11 plus 11.6. Second has an eigenvalue of 6.9, uh, my apologies, which is greater than one. Third has an eigenvalue of 3.6, so on and so forth. The first six components have an eigenvalue 
bigger than one. And therefore, we choose a six component solution. Please look at the seventh component, the eigenvalues 0.83. Eighth component has an eigenvalue less than one, which is 0.76. And therefore, we don't look at seven component solution or an eight component solution. This is a very important column because this tells me the percentage of variance. The first component has, the first component explains 35% of the variation individually. Second component explains 21% of the variation in the data set. Third one explains 11 components. If you add up the total variance for these six components, it comes to 80%. So the first six components are able to explain 80% of the variation in the data set, which means that the bulk of the variation in the data set are accounted for by the first six components itself. The remaining variables, 33 variables is what I had, 33 minus six is 27. The remaining 27 variables explain less than 20% of the variation. Since their contribution is negligible, we can ignore the remaining 26 components. So at this stage, we have decided to extract six components. I'll now move on to the next big question. What are these six components? Let me go to step six. Let's look at the interpretation of each of these six components. You can see here in the column, you have six different factors. Factor one individually accounts for 36%. Which are the states which fall under the first factor? You can see important states like Delhi, Haryana, Punjab, Chandigarh, Uttar Pradesh, Bihar, they are loaded with factor one. So 36% of the variation of power consumption in India is explained by states like Delhi, Haryana, Punjab, so on and so forth. Look at the second component. The second component explains 21% of the variation in the data set. Which are the states which are loaded with factor two? Mainly you see Dadar and Nagar Haveli. Then you see Himachal Pradesh and Meghalaya. What about the third component? The third component explains 11% of the variation. And when I scroll down, you can see mostly Southern states like Andhra Pradesh, Kerala, Tamil Nadu. You also have Maharashtra, Karnataka in the third factor list. Proceeding in the same manner, you can interpret factor four, factor five, and factor six. So this is how you can extract the factors and see their loading. But one last thing which I want to show is, in case you want to save the factor scores and use it for further analysis, can we see the factor scores? To do this, let me go back to the raw data set. This is the power consumption data. And when I scroll to the extreme right side, you can see here the factor scores. This is the first factor, second factor, third factor, fourth factor, fifth factor, and sixth factor. What is so important about these six factors? These six factors are uncorrelated. They are completely independent of each other. So this is how factor analysis helps me reduce the size of the data. Let me just show you the original data that I had. I had 33 different columns. These are the original states and I had the power consumption for different states. I had 33 different columns. They had high relationship. Now from 33, I don't need to work on 33 variables. I can look at only these six factors and work on these six factors for my further analysis. With this, I have come to the end of today's video. I thank you very much for watching this particular video. 
I once again request you to subscribe to my channel in case you have not subscribed to my channel. I also like, I also request you to like and share my videos with your friends and family. Thank you very much for watching this video. Have a great day.